Good morning. Good morning. I ask you up front for your help and support for us to give Brad the boot and let's protect elections in the state of Georgia. Congressman Jody Heiss thinks former President Trump actually won Georgia in 2020. He voted to toss the electoral results for his own state even after the January 6th insurrection. Now he wants to be in charge of running the next election there in 2024. I believe it, we had major problems in Georgia and uh, all of that led me eventually to say, I'm the one that needs to step up and challenge Brad Raffensperger. If you can name a secretary of state, it's probably Brad Raffensperger, who became a household name after Trump asked him to steal the election. All I want to do is this. I just want to find uh, 11,780 votes, which is one more than we have, because we won the state. When you heard that phone call between former President Trump and Raffensperger, do you think that Trump did anything wrong in that call when he asked him to find the votes? The context of that call was in the midst of tons of question marks about the election integrity issue in Georgia. And I always uh, heard that call and, and interpret it from the perspective of, make sure we've got legal votes so that are being like, counted. No, you don't think Trump did anything wrong in that call? Uh, not, not from my perspective. Okay. Uh, you know, those, those are issues that others will determine. But the, look, we have had such massive question marks with our election in Georgia. And the more we go through this, the more we understand, yeah, there were gaping holes. And I, I believe that uh, President Trump won Georgia based on what I see. You don't think Biden won Georgia? I don't believe Biden won Georgia. There were several recounts in Georgia and all found Biden won. Trump is having trouble letting go of 2020, but he's also turned his focus towards getting his supporters into secretary of state positions where they can run future elections. There are 27 races for the office on the ballot this November. Many of these officials are charged with not only running the elections, but counting the votes and certifying the eventual results. At least 21 people running for secretary of state have said they think Trump won in 2020, or tried to overturn the results, or have spread lies about the election results. So far, he has endorsed heists in Georgia, as well as candidates in Michigan and Arizona, all of which he lost in 2020. And he's already said what he expects from them if they win. There's a famous statement, sometimes the vote counter is more important than the candidate, and we can't let that ever, ever happen again. You're going to be the vote counter in Georgia. Is he asking you to find votes for him, do you think? Well, he certainly has not asked any of that type of thing. I mean, I take, I take that, that, that to implies say... implies something like asking the people that are running for secretary of state, or in some cases, attorney general of the state, to find the votes for him? No, I, I don't take it that way. Look, what my, my purpose and my goal is to have fair, honest elections. The issue is not who wins. The issue is, was it an honest election? And has the voice of the people been accurately exhibited as the outcome of the election? And to do that, we've got to make sure that only legal votes are cast and only legal votes are counted. And those who violate the laws need to be prosecuted for doing so. There is no evidence of widespread illegal voting in Georgia in 2020. Since defying the former president, Raffensperger has faced endless public attacks from Trump. And Jody is running against one of the worst secretary of states in America, Rhino Brad Raffensperger, who is trying to turn the tables on me because I'm fighting for election integrity. This type of talk resulted in death threats for him and his family. He is fighting to even make it out of the Republican primary and still trying to convince Georgia Republicans that there weren't thousands of illegal ballots in the 2020 election. Do you think that Donald Trump was trying to steal the 2020 election? And do you think that he was trying to use you in that phone call to accomplish that? Well, I don't know what the, uh, the gentleman was really thinking. What I do know is that people that were feeding him information, it was just flat dead wrong. And I don't know what their intent was. I don't know if they believed it, but Every allegation that was made in Georgia, we ran it down, and we could say, this is what happened in Georgia. So it sounds like, yes, you do think Donald Trump tried to overthrow the election. I think what 
America reads, needs right now is principled conservative leadership. People that'll do the right thing, they'll stand in the gap no matter what the cost is. And I show, I've show, i shown that I'll do that. Why do you think there is so much misinformation about the 2020 election in Georgia? Oh, we've been out there since day one. But you have to understand, on a good day, we have 40,000 Twitter followers. Other people had 80 million Twitter followers. Plus they had media out there on the conservative side. We opened up hundreds and hundreds of investigations to make sure that there was not fraud in this election. And what we did find, there were instances of fraud, but none of it ever added up to overturning the election results. And President Trump did come up short. The Secretary of State race in Georgia is tame compared to this next bunch of candidates. Here they are at a QAnon conference, full of people who believe things like JFK Jr. is going to come back from the dead to be Trump's running mate. As I was praying and praying and praying, it became clear and even like overwhelmingly clear that God was anointing Donald J. Trump to continue being our president. I had no doubt that he was going to continue being our president. After serving as a poll challenger at the TCF Center in Detroit and witnessing illegal ballots being cast, witnessing a process designed to facilitate corruption, I realized I couldn't sit back any longer and complain. We formed a coalition May 1st, and these are the candidates here, patriots, that are gonna help us take our country back. Of the people on that stage, the guy on the right, Arizona State Representative Mark Fincham, probably has the best shot at winning. He has Trump's endorsement, and his campaign has raised more than the two leading Democrats combined. In the past, Fincham's claimed to be a member of the far-right militia, the Oath Keepers. And he was at the Capitol on January 6th, though he denies going inside the building. There's a whole lot of evidence that suggests both incompetence and criminality. After interview requests went unanswered, we found Fincham outside the Arizona Attorney General's office in December, still protesting the 2020 election results. Let me ask you about what happened in, in 2020. Would you have certified the election results here in Arizona if you had been Secretary of State? Knowing what I knew at the time, I would have pushed, I would have pushed the pause button and said, oh, wait, wait, wait a minute. We've got a margin of error greater than the margin of victory. It would be irresponsible to sign an official document knowing that there was fraud in the system, that there were discrepancies in the system. So that sounds like a no from you then, that you I, would not have certified based, this law. If based upon you know, following that day through, we'd have gotten to five, six, seven o'clock in the evening. I would have deferred signing it until we had one of two things happen. We either have an audit or we have the legal cases adjudicated because neither thing had happened. Okay. Well, okay. then there was an audit and then there wasn't any proof of any you know, major votes that would have changed. The you have not even looked at it, have you? We were here over the summer. Okay, so you need to go to Arizona. Sir, there's no evidence, though, of widespread okay. voter fraud. That is Arizona. absolutely crap, and you know it. You didn't look at the findings. I did read the findings. Uh, it's not crap. There were investigations and so-called audits in Arizona, and all of them found no evidence of widespread fraud. And Fincham's still refusing to accept the results. There's not a whole lot of precedent here for what happens if a secretary of state just refuses to certify an election. He popped up a month later at the first Trump rally this year, saying exactly what the former president wants to hear. Ladies and gentlemen, we know it and they know it. Donald Trump won. Fincham was joined by members of the upper echelon of right-wing conspiracy theorists, like Stop the Steal leader Ali Alexander, the alleged Q behind QAnon, Ron Watkins, and my pillow CEO, Mike Lindell. And I will promise you this, there's not gonna be any election done with any machines or computers done in 2022. These guys have plans. No machines, says Lindell. Fincham wants to get rid of mail-in voting entirely. But Arizona Republicans mail in their ballots too, at about the same rate as Democrats. If he's Secretary of State, it could be harder for everyone to vote. But don't ask him about it. Sir, if you get rid of mail-in voting, will there be will there be a lot of people in Arizona that you think may not vote? Uh, no, there's a lot of people in Arizona that are demanding that we do away with mail-in voting. You probably ought to check the polls. There were more than a million people that voted by mail, though, okay, you're, not, you're not listening to me. I'm listening to you. La, la, la. 